Let's take a look at the concept of the present value of growth opportunities, or PVGO. And what it is, is it's an approach for separating out the value of the stock into two parts. The value with no growth and the value with growth. Well, we know that firms should undertake projects as long as the NPV is greater than zero. Why is that? Because um, net present value projects that are positive add value to the firm. So we want to do those when we have those. Now, what happens if the firm has no uh, positive NPV projects? Well, this is really what we call the no growth scenario. So the stock price is going to equal dividends divided by the cost of equity minus the growth rate of dividends. Usually we use dividends one period into the future is the actual, actually the correct formula here. But this isn't growing, so G is equal to zero. And we're going to assume that in this no growth case, the firm pays out 100% of earnings as dividends. Now, when the firm is growing, usually they retain some earnings so that they can reinvest in the firm. But if the firm has nothing to invest in, um, theoretically, they should just pay it all out in dividends. And you see that sometimes with activist shareholders like a Carl Icahn, who may take a position in a stock and say, look, you've got lots of cash sitting around. If you don't have any interesting projects to invest in, then pay that money out as a dividend to shareholders. So when we do that, we get the stock price's earnings divided by the cost of equity. It's just a perpetuity. So the value of the stock equals the value with no growth plus the value of the growth opportunity. So if we just rearrange the terms here, we take the stock price or the value of the stock minus the earnings over the cost of equity, which is the value with no growth, and the rest is the present value of the growth opportunity. So let's take a look at an example here. Suppose XYZ company sells for $65 a share. The company has a cost of equity of 10% and earnings per share are $4.80. Let's find the present value of the growth opportunity. Well, we know what the stock price is at 65. Earnings are 480 divided by 0 0.10. And um, I picked this number because it's easy to do in your head. It's just going to be $48 is the value with no growth. So the present value of the growth opportunity is $17. Let's take a look at some actual um, real world companies that you should be familiar with. So what I did is I went on Yahoo Finance and I found out what their stock price was. I looked up their beta, which uh, Yahoo Finance provides, as well as their earnings per share. And I estimated their cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model and the, these assumptions, the market risk premium being 5.5% and the risk-free rate being 2%. So if you want Apple's cost of equity, it's going to be 1.19 times 5.5 uh, plus 2%. So I get 8.55%, 8, actually 8.5%. I think four or five percent, these are rounded off. And I did the same for Johnson and Johnson and Amazon, Ford and Tesla. And I calculated the no growth opportunity. So this would be 614 divided by 0 0.0855. And you get $71.85. Let's take the actual price that Apple's selling for, 149.64, subtract out the no growth and you get the present value of the growth opportunity is $77.79. So I figured out the percentage. I just took the present value of the growth opportunity divided by the price. And you can see that a little bit more than half of what Apple's price is, is made up of this present value of growth opportunities. If you do it for Johnson & Johnson, again, you calculate the no growth or no growth state, and you subtract that from the current price and you get the present value of the growth opportunity being 47.85. So in this case, only 26.63% 26 
of the stock prices made up in this um, growth opportunity part. Okay, I also did it for Amazon, and you can see that that's almost 80% of their value is made up in this growth opportunity because the no growth part is only 475.64 and the company sells for 23 over 2300. Okay, if you look at Ford, you're actually paying more than the no growth should be, so you're actually got a negative present value of the growth opportunity. And Tesla finally is after doing the calculation, you find is, you know, almost 93% of its value is made up of this growth opportunity. And it's not really surprising. Um, Johnson & Johnson is probably not expected to grow as quickly as Tesla, which people are very optimistic about, especially as we move into you know, this environmental uh, consciousness where electric cars are one of the ways we're hopefully going to limit climate change or reduce climate change. Amazon is still considered a grower and a mover. Um, a lot of that because of their um, AWS, their uh, web services, you know. Um, so not really surprising. Ford, as an old world company, you don't really necessarily expect this to be negative. And this could just be from the time period that we happen to be, that I happen to be doing this in. Okay, right now, Ford is in hard times because of the pandemic and they're having difficulty getting the computer chips necessary to build cars. So if you've been to um, a dealership uh, lately, okay, right now this is uh, June or um, late May or early June of 2022, and there are real shortages of cars on the lot. So not really surprising here, but this is probably more of a uh, um, due to the fact that right now they simply can't get any computer chips to build cars but um, I would expect that this would usually be positive although not nearly as large as Tesla's or Amazon's. Okay well I hope that's helpful and I hope you get some understanding of what the present value of growth opportunities is.